Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome into our online campus. Welcome there as well. And we are um, we're in the middle of the series called Live Generously, and we're really talking about not we're not talking finances. We're talking about really how do we live our lives? Are we generously? Are we giving? Are we today? We're talking about being encouraging because a lot of times we're not encouraging to one another. We don't give each other. You know, it, it, it's and I, in fact, let me stop there for a second. We are completely opposite of that most times. Most of the times, we live in this chronically negative world. It's with the world, it's always voices of discouragement. You know, you go to your kid's school and your teachers are like, well, you know, your kid is doing really well, but little Timmy over here is doing better. You know, and I'm sorry to, to use the voice, but that's exactly what I went through a couple weeks ago. Then you get the, you get the progress report and you go, she's got almost all straight A's. How much better, do you, how much better can she do? And, you know, and, 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 and so, but it's just always about, you know, she can be better. She can be better. And we, well, we agree with that, but she can be better. Or your kid comes home crying where they weren't picked for the team, whether it's kickball or whatever. They come, or, or they're not in the advanced class. Your kids didn't get moved into that advanced class. Or you can't get, uh, you know, your kids don't really know what it's like to have fun. Because when they're at school, they're always on the bench. Um... Maybe for some of you guys, you have an Instagram account, and you don't have that many likes on Instagram, and so it upsets you. And you're like, why are everybody upset with me? Why is, what's going on? What happened? Maybe you don't have that many likes on a photo. Maybe you posted something. Maybe, you know, like maybe yesterday I posted a picture that I was with my family at Sam's Club, and somebody said, you saw the big teddy bear? It was like, so maybe some of you guys saw that. But I didn't get enough likes, and so I'm upset with all of you. There wasn't enough likes. <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and so... Um, as you look at those things, and as you see, this is how our world is. It's chronically negative. You know, the hard data comes out after you hear what everybody says, and you go, I'm a loser. That's what it says. You know, you go to work, your project wasn't good enough. Your spouse picks you apart. Your in-law says that your kid, you're not raising your kids right, and your kids agree. They look at you and go, oh, we agree with them. Let's go over there. They give us everything. You know, and then, or maybe somebody goes, are those new pants? And you go, yeah. And they go, ooh. You go, what? Ooh, 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 really? New? You picked those? You know, I, I, it's, you know, what is it? What happens? You know, your social media, you're watching people and you're like, are they on vacation again? Really? Again? How can they afford to do that? What do you mean date night? Who has date nights? How, how do people actually have date nights? They're having a party? Why wasn't I invited? What happened? This is how my life, by the way, I invite all of you. If you notice that if, I, if we throw a party here, it's like fine, I invite all of you. If you didn't get an invite, let me know, because I'll make sure I, I double invite you for my personal account and the church account next time. <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll get it. If we get to this point where we go, my life stinks. That's how we get to. We, we go, I, I can, you know, we always go, if I had a little more money, or if I had this, or I had that, and we end up feeling discouraged all the time. We end up starting to get upset, and we, you know, and it just kind of, we don't realize that God is calling us to be an encourager. And, you know, and, and as we're kind of going through this, I don't know if you have notes, but if you don't have notes, you can download our app and you can follow along with our app. You can do everything on our app from fill out your connection card and all those things. And that's why I just want to kind of encourage you to do that because we're actually printing less of the bulletin. Um, and, and so we, we're kind of trying to reduce our carbon footprint. So as, you, as I dive into this, just kind of know that we're trying to uh, we'll do that. Um, we're called to be, we want to build others up. While the world continues to tear us down. You know, we have this incredibly spiritual thing to do is to build up one another. It's incredibly spiritual. If we can do that, if we can help build one another, I mean, I mean just imagine how much different the world would be if we were actually helping one another rather than tearing them down. And so the thing is, is that a lot of times that's what we do. We tear one another down and we don't even realize it. We don't realize how strong the tongue is. It's so strong. Our tongue can do amazing things it, it can lift people up it can tear them down it can it can build them up and it can break them apart and we forget that the, what our what we say and how we say it and what we do it, it really affects things i mean look at your children when you praise them compared to how much difference it is when you scold them i mean it, it just when you look at it you can see that there's dramatic difference on what your tongue can do it, it's you know and it's amazing on how fast you ever, you ever anybody ever bit your tongue Anybody, like, like, bit it good? Like, you're like, oh, like, it started bleeding, and you're like, oh, do I gotta get stitches in my tongue? How do I do that? Have you, have you ever noticed how fast it heals? 
how, you know, how strong it is, how healing it is. You see how, can you imagine how fast it heals others when we use it in the right direction? Can you see that? Our God is an encouraging God. A lot of times we forget this. Our God is an encouraging God. And you know, when, when you read this in 2 Corinthians, when we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. But God, who encourages those who are discouraged, encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. Now, 2 Corinthians that's 7, verses 5 and 6, and it's, and it's an NLT, so it's a translation. So I just want you to kind of bear with me there. It's, not a, it's an NIV, so it's maybe a little different than what you're reading in your version. But here's the deal is that someone cares. Someone cares. God cares. God actually cares so much that he sent somebody. He sent somebody to you. See, that's the thing is that a lot of times we don't realize this. We continue to we get into the dumps. We get into this Eeyore mood or we get into the Snuffleupagus. Gee, bird, I don't know what to do. And we get so upset and we get so torn up into ourselves and we hide. We go home and we, get, we you know, go climb in bed and we go, I want the fluffiest pillows. And you can't ever get it right. And you bury yourself underneath the blankets and you're like going, it's so hot. You take the blankets off. It's cold. Every, nothing can be right. Well, the whole time you were supposed to be with somebody. Somebody was supposed to be encouraging you and lifting you up. But you went and hid. And you're going, why is this depression lasting so long? Because you hid. You went, and went, you went and placed yourself on a shelf and you said, somebody will come find me. They will. They will. They'll find me here. Somebody will care. God cares. They've called. You probably don't answer the phone. Oh, I don't want to talk to them now. <laughs> Gee, Bert. And that's how it gets. That's where our life is. That's what we do. What we have to start doing is we have to start making some shifts and we have to start making some changes. We have to get to this point where we need to realize that there's, there's really spiritual things we can do that will help one another, that helps us give. That's how, we, that's how we're calling this series, Live Generously, because these three things not only will help others, but it also helps us. The three of the most spiritual things you can do, number one, is encourage others daily. Why? Because you face the voice of discouragement every day. Every day you face it. Every day you hear, you, you know, you, you hear, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't very good. You left the dishes out. Why can't we afford to do this? If we had a little more money, why couldn't we do this? Or maybe you even have your own voice. I don't have that much to give. No one appreciates what I do. We just tear ourselves up. You know, it's literally, we end up destroying ourselves. And the Bible tells us, it says, but encourage one another. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Hebrews 3.13. Listen to this. So that none of you may be, and so let's just kind of go back, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Because here's what happens. Here's what happens, is that you get to this point and you go, well, they didn't call me. And your heart gets a little hardened. Well, why did they reach out to me? And it gets a little hardened. And all of a sudden... All of a sudden, at some point, we're dealing with concrete. And now, we have to take a sledgehammer in order to break down the walls in order, to have a, in order for us to have a relationship. Because we beat ourselves up and we've broken ourselves into this position to where we don't have what we really, you know, we're like, oh, why didn't they call? Why didn't this happen? And it's deceitfulness. It's not that somebody didn't call. It's not that somebody didn't say, hey, what's going on? It's literally because you decided that you wanted to hide. You decided that you wanted to run away. You didn't call and reach out to anybody. You didn't say, hey, this is what's going on. But this is the reason why we have to encourage others daily. Because even though that person didn't call, you usually know when something's wrong. If you know somebody well, if you've been talking to them on a regular basis, you would know. But the thing is, is we're not talking to people on a regular basis, are we? Anybody in here have any margin in their lives? By margin, I mean, if you've ever taken, remember when you were a little kid, they used to give you a piece of, white piece of paper, if you held it up to the light, you could see the margin on one side, you could see the margin on the other side, and they'd say, keep your writing between the margins. Why? Why do you keep your writing between the margins? Because every once in a while, you're going to have a word that doesn't just kind of fit in. It's going to have to go into the margin a little bit. It just doesn't, just doesn't fit. That's how our lives are. See, the problem is, though, we've stopped saving margin for ourselves, 
and now we run just straight across the paper. It's, it's, it's edge to edge instead of margin to margin. And so our lives are so busy that we've forgotten how to actually communicate with other people, that we've forgotten how do we reach out and talk to one another because we're so busy. We go from traffic jam to traffic jam to work to deck to another traffic jam to our houses to where we get so tired of after being on the road that we don't, that we just, we turn into vegetables. We sit down and go, I'm so tired and end up waking up on the couch later that evening. That's what our lives look like. Instead of being encouraged, instead of being able to take this time and go, oh, I need to develop some margin and be able to encourage other people and be able to talk to others in my life, to be able to, to really have these groups. And when you start looking at it, how many people are involved in small groups? How many people do you have connected with you to actually to be getting encouragement? And you're looking at this and going, well, the church doesn't reach out. Well, the church did try and reach out. We tried to get you plugged into a small group. We tried to get you plugged into where you can... To where you have somebody who's reaching out. The small group leader can talk to you. When something's wrong, they tell us. So we can reach out to you. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. Isn't that what we've done? We've eliminated that margin to where now we can't meet together. So now we're neglecting meeting together. Which means that we're not going to be able to encourage one another. And it says, let, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It's Hebrews 10, 24, verse 25. And if you go to other versions, it says, it says let us not stop meeting together as, as most have done. Because that's what's happened, is most people have stopped meeting together. You might meet with your family, you might meet with this person or that person, but you don't have a small group of believers that you're with that are encouraging you and helping you and lifting you up. And you're going, why don't I feel encouraged? Where is your small group? Where is that, where's that group of people at that's going, I want to lift you up. I want to help you get through this. I want to help you get through with everything that's going on. But you're going, well, you're supposed to know, Mike. God didn't give me that voice. He didn't give me that. I don't get the ability to read your thoughts. He didn't go, Mike, this is your gifting. Here it is. I don't get to know. I literally need people to tell me. I need small group leaders to tell me. I need you to tell me. I don't play that well of stalker on Facebook. I just don't. You know, and that's the thing is that when you start going through and you start seeing this and you go, well, how does it, this, that, that you know about this person or that person? Because I was told. Simple as that. How do we get encouragement daily? From our small groups, from people that we can be part of. And if you're going, oh, my small groups have already started and it's too late for me to become part of one. Nope. You can just say, I want to show up. Women's group, Josh's group would love to have you, my group, anybody, all of them, you can go to a group, you can show up this week, we do potluck, whatever, and then uh, we'll, we'll see you in a couple weeks. That's fine. But you need to be part of a group. That's what it needs to be. You have to have people around you that are going to encourage you daily. We need to encourage others spiritually. So it, sometimes we don't do it well. You know, you, you get so focused that it's always got to be spiritually. You're like, I got to make this all the time. It could be, a hey, good job on that project. Just good job. Or maybe walking in the house one time and going, the house looks nice. I'm, I'm, I suck at this. I'll just tell you right off the bat. My wife will have to remind me. I'll just sit in the chair and she'll go, oh, what? And I'm like, I'm like what, what are you talking about? What do you think? Uh, I, I, I think that I'm home. I, I don't know. But we forget that we need to be encouraging. But if, she, if I don't go, hey, the house looks great, she's going to go, well, it didn't look any better than, when, if it doesn't look any better than how it did previously, why did I do all of that work? The house looks nice. Hey, I love your haircut. <sighs> Romans 1. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity. God willing to come at last to see you. For I long to visit so I can bring you the spiritual gift that will help you go strong in the Lord. And when we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith. But I also want to be encouraged by yours. The Bible tells us, if you go back and you look at, it, it says, iron sharpens iron as one iron sharpens another. It takes both of us. It can't just be me pouring in. It takes you to pour into me as well. It takes us to be going back and forth. That's how iron sharpens iron. It's the rubbing together. It's... And you can't do it from a distance. If I was to take a sharpening iron and try and do it from, and, and, and Ryan was holding it over there, 
it takes us to get close. We got to come near one another. We got to be able to, it's got to create that friction and that heat. And it's got to, that's really where the transformation starts to happen. And sometimes disagreements happen out of it. Did you know that? That sometimes that people's opinions are heavy, heavy. And disagreements are okay. Now, fights are not okay, but disagreements are, and usually you can work through those. But if you're encouraging one another and encouraging one another in your faith, then it's amazing on what happens and how your faith, each one of your faiths will grow. When you look at others and talk to them and go, I'm encouraged by, you know, you talk to somebody and go, I, I love to see how you treat your wife because it encourages me to help treat my wife better. You know, you talk to people about that. You know, you, you watch some people and you see, you see their, their passion on how they invite people to church. Or you see their passion on how, they, how they're, if they're passionate about serving the homeless or they're passionate about this. It makes it to where I'm so much more passionate about it. I see people that are, you know, it, it's like we go out and we serve the homeless. And you can see, you can see where it's pulled on somebody's heartstrings so much that they're, they're out there and they're going, I, I, I just want to be able to, I, I want to be able to do more. And it makes it to where I want to do more. You know, it's kind of that iron sharpening iron. It makes it to where we can go out and we want to do, we can, and together we can do more. There's a lot that we can do together. The thing is, is that we have this tendency to hide. And we have this tendency to not make church a priority. We have this tendency to go, I don't need to be encouraged. I don't need, to, I don't need others around me encouraging me daily. Really? Because you have people that are tearing you down daily. You have coworkers that will look at you and as soon as you walk away, they talk about you behind your back. You have people that you, that you, you, you call friends, but as soon as you walk away... They're not your friends. You see what they're wearing? You see what's going on? You see that haircut? Ah, what's wrong with them? It happens all the time. It's where our lives have been, it, it, it's all the time. Maybe you come in here and you're in service and you see how somebody else worships. You, and you just say, oh man, I love how they worship. I want to get to that point. And you talk to them about it. I, guys, I will tell you that everybody in here, nobody in here is afraid of a conversation. Nobody. I've talked to almost each and every one of you, and nobody in here is afraid of a conversation. In fact, you're longing for it. You're longing for a conversation. We're long, it, it, our hearts are going, I, I, I need it. We were not designed to do life alone. You were not designed. In fact, God looked at it and said, that's wrong. He needs somebody. You need somebody in your life. You need others. And it can't just be your spouse. You go, oh, it's my spouse. My spouse is my best friend. Absolutely. You need that person that you can tell everything to that is going to be there for everything. But you need, if you're a guy, you need some men in your life. Some men that are going to hold you accountable for how you treat your wife. If you're a woman, you need some women in your life that are going to hold you accountable for how you treat your husband and how you treat those around you and how you treat your children. You need people around you. You need people that look at it from the outside and go, that's wrong simple as that and it's not judging it's actually offering correction as long as you do it in love don't walk up to them and go that's wrong stupid <laughs> don't do that be nice you walk up and go hey i've noticed something and i think we can do something better i think something else will work i think this will be better and offer a point of correction that's it that's what we're called to do that's how we're called to love one another and help one another grow that's what life is supposed to be about. That's what church is about. But we're, you better be giving them some spiritual uplifting at the same time. Don't be just there all the time. Be that person. I noticed that you did this wrong, and I noticed that you did that wrong, and I noticed you did that wrong, and never once go, here's what you did right. In fact, you should be saying, this is what you did right more often than any other time than you say this is what you did wrong. Sometimes you hear that line, your prayer meant the world to me. Because that's what it does. Brings us closer together. And I'll tell you, praying together brings you really close together. It just does. You get to know one another. You get to you have these different things. Now, don't take something that's supposed to be normal and try and make it spiritual. Because then you're going to come off weird. Okay? It's just what happens. I mean, if it's normal, it's normal. Just leave it as normal. Go, great job. Don't, don't, don't come in, you know. It's, and I'll give you an example. You go, great game. You made the winning goal, right? God was with you. No, you go, God gave you the talent. That's amazing. Okay, but don't go, God was with you at that point. 
Because usually God's not with you while you're playing soccer. God's giving you the talent to go out and play soccer or go play football. Or whatever. You know, he's gone. You can have God with you and you can have his presence that's always with us. But it's not just with us when we're scoring goals. What about all the other times? What about when everything else is going on? What about when I'm just dribbling it up the field? Or what, what about when I'm, when I'm throwing a pass? He wasn't there then. What about when I threw the interception? He says he's always with me. He wasn't there then, huh? No. He gave me the talent. And so God gave you an amazing talent. Utilize it. Grow it. That's what we're supposed to do. Don't just try and make it weird. You're like, oh, I got I to gotta God talk them. You know, you, you got to go, you know, congratulations on the promotion. You know, I, and those are things that usually it's, you, you can say you were faithful in small ways, and so God has blessed you in big ways. Just being faithful in small things usually causes us to be blessed in big things. That's what happens. Encourage somebody who's hurting. You know, it, 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 we, we lose this a lot of times. We don't preach, we pre, end up preaching down to them when they're hurting instead of lifting them up. You know, you hear it, sorry you have cancer, but if you pray and you have strong enough faith, God will heal you. No, well, it's really a wrong way to go about it. Sorry that you're sick. You know, if you, it, it's kind of like me saying, if you pray and have enough faith, I won't hit you in the mouth. Kind of like saying that. That's exactly what, that's what you said. You know, if you go off of this and you say, sorry that you have cancer, I can't imagine. Because most, if you haven't been there, you can't imagine. You can't imagine it. But I'm believing with you for healing. It's a whole lot different. It's a whole lot different than saying, well, you must have did something wrong. God just doesn't do this. You must have did something. No. I'm so sorry. But I'm here with you. I can't even imagine what's going on. And I'm believing with you for healing. It's a big difference. It's a change. The other thing is, I'm going to tell you the last th the, the third thing that you need to really start working on is you need to encourage yourself. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Now, at one point, David is massively distressed. And the people around him are talking about stoning him. You know, he's distressed. He's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. And, and in, in 1 Samuel 30, David steps out and he goes, you know what? And, and, and when you read the book, Bible, it says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know what you need to do sometimes? You need to preach to yourself. You need to step out and go, I have faith for this. I can do this. My God is with me. He is here and he is with me. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ. I can make everything happen. My God is for me. He's not against me. So, you know, God has given me everything that I need to get through this. God has given me everything I need to live. I want you to go, anybody in here keep a journal? Anybody? So, when you have a journal, here's what happens. Is that you can go back five years from now. And you can look and you can see what God has done in that five years. How your faith has transformed. How everything has happened. Now, I tell you is that you need to start when you start when you're reading the Bible. It's really it's just healthy that you write down. There's just some steps that you should be writing down: what you read, what you were looking for, and what God spoke to you through. And when you do this through the Bible on a regular basis, you go backwards five years. So I keep an online I keep an online journal, and I went back and I go and I and, and as I was going back, I look back five years, and I go back and I go. It is amazing on how much God has spoken to me through certain verses five years ago that when I read them now, it's something completely different. That's why it's called the living word. It lives. It trans it, it's whatever the situation is, what's going on. But it's also, the, it's amazing to see how much God has spoken to me and grown me in that same time, that same five years. But it's happened because of you. You guys have helped grow me. You guys have said, hey, Mike, you've done this, you've done that. Even the points of correction where it's gone, okay, I need to grow from this. I need to, I, I, and it's amazing uh, when you go back and you find that scriptural reference that you can grow from it, that you can be, that, so I'm telling you is that start keeping a prayer journal. Start keeping, a, you know, and not one of those, oh, David doesn't like me. You don't need that. You know, I mean, maybe you do need that, but you, maybe your memory's bad. I don't know, but. But you need to keep a prayer journal. That way you can see what God has done over the last five years. It's amazing on how God will transform your life. You know, you have to start looking at it. As I, and I look back and I go, my God will work it out. My God will make a way. And he has every time. 
There's been points of discouragement that I've looked back in there and I go, man, God's done amazing things through my points of discouragement. That even when I get discouraged, that he's shown me how that my faith can grow. And, I, it's, and really what, what's been amazing is that I have that encouragement on file. I have that five years worth of encouragement on file. I can go back to it and go, man, that's, I can look at this. And it, you know, it's cool when you do it online, you can search it. You can just go, I want to look at where I, where I was facing this. And you put in those key words and all of a sudden it pops up. <clears throat> Sometimes somebody's left you an impactful voice, a voicemail. Somebody left you one. Somebody called and said, I'm, I'm proud of you. And I, I, I'm, I'm, save it. And be able to go reference it. Go back to it. You know, and that's what happens. Sometimes, sometimes you'll get one, and you'll just go, I, I, you know, and don't just save the bad ones that you're like, oh, remember when you said this to me? You actually save the good ones. You know, maybe some of you guys, you, you believe in the mail system, and you've sent letters. You know what people do when they, when they get a letter? They save it. Send an encouraging letter to somebody. Send a thank you card. Just a simple thank you. You know, and, I, and I've told you is that you know, sometimes as people that we get these opportunities that we have stuff that comes up in our lives and that we have these different things that go on. And, you know, every week, if you watch Jimmy Fallon, guess what happens? He does, every Friday, he does thank you cards. But in reality, you know, on the show he does it, but in reality, he does thank you notes every Friday. It takes a half hour and just that's part of, his, that's part of what he does. And the reason why he does that is because it's important that people get that sense of encouragement, that they know what's going on and they get the sense of this is who you are and this is what life is. But so often, we don't. So often, you don't send a thank you card. You don't send a thank you text. Hey, thanks for just taking care of that for me. There's no points of, there's no points of going, here's the encouragement. Here's what your life needs. Here's, no, it's, it's all, it's me. It's mine. And it makes it to where people can't even go back and re reference a text message sometimes. They can't even go back and look. They can't even go back to it and go, look at what, you know, look at what they did say thank you. And I know that you're up here and going, Mike, quit whining. I know that's what you're going right now. Stop whining. You know, just because I didn't send you a thank you note or any of those things. You know, and what happens is a lot of times we get to this point and we go, I'm sharp, we can fix it. And that's not what we're called to do. We're not called to do that. We're called to encourage one another. We're called to rely on one another. It was amazing. Some of you guys <clears throat> don't know is because if you would have saw Thanksgiving here, it was amazing on how it came together. You know, you look at, are we going to have enough food? Are we not going to have enough food? Not only do we have enough food to feed everybody here, but literally, the storehouse was overflowing. We went out and, and fed the community. It, it, it's amazing on what happens is that when we come together, when we do something as a group, when we love one another, and, and it's like when we don't do that, when we continue to go, I'm going to do life on my own, I'm going to try and muscle through this, I'm sharp, I can fix it, I can do it all on my own, you'll see what happens. God is calling you to be an encourager. You know, each and every one of you. God is calling each and every one of you to be an encourager, daily, spiritually, and even to yourself. You're supposed to encourage one another. You're supposed to spiritually encourage one another. And you also need to start speaking words of, of encouragement to yourself. Because a lot of times you don't. You look in the mirror, and you look in there, and you're like, oh, this is what's wrong with you. Instead of seeing the beauty that God sees in you. That's what happened. I have to fix this. I have to take care of that. I have to make this change. I have to do that. Instead of seeing the beauty that God saw in you. Instead of looking at, you know, and, and it happens a lot. And I'm not, I'm, and by all means, I'm not, I can't judge because I look at this and I, and I get up in the mirror and I look and I go, man, you are, you are heavy, dude. What's wrong with you? But at the same time, I still look at it and I go, oh, God has given me this amazing gift and this ability to be able to just, to just love and to be able to and to preach, and to be able to do what he, what he designed me to do. What's God to ask you to do? What God, and, and sometimes what's happened is, is we cover it up. Just like sometimes we cover it up with makeup, you know, that beauty. And I'm not trying to say to stop wearing makeup, but what I'm saying is, is that that's what we've done with that gift that God has given you to encourage others. You've covered it up, and you've hidden it. You've buried it. And instead of encouraging people, you know, I'm afraid of what they're going to say. I'm afraid of what they're going to say about this. I'm afraid they're going to judge me on how I talk to them or how I love or what I do. Instead of just loving. Instead of just being, I saw something amazing today. I, I'd love to see what, what, what else is God going to do. 
It's amazing because a lot of times when your birthdays pop up and I am on Facebook and it says today is so-and-so's birthday and I look and I go, and I try and think back to the year. I don't, and I don't, I don't look to your Facebook highlights, but I think about my Facebook highlights and how most of you have been part of my Facebook highlights throughout that year. And I, and I always wonder and I always go, I go, man, it's an amazing, amazing year with this person. What's next year? What's God going to do next year? What's it going to be? What's next year going to bring? Because next year is going to be something amazing. Look what God's already done. Look what he's going to do now. Instead of us looking at this and going, man, I got another year older and another wrinkle. We should be looking at it and going, man, that's, a, that's a, another year older and another, another story to be able to tell. Another tale to be able to, to, to help somebody else get through and get to the point where I'm at. And encourage and love and help. That's what we should be looking at. Not going, how do I make these things go away? How can I make it to where I tell more people about it? How can I make it to where we share these? Share these stories. Hey, I'm back. We can do life differently. Small change. Stop being so negative. Stop being so, oh, it's got to be this direction or that direction. And just make it to where we encourage one another. We can live generously through encouragement, through encouraging others, through going, you know, instead of trying to hide that and harbor it and bank it up and thinking that you're saving it for yourself because you're not, you can generously give away that encouragement. It's free. It doesn't cost you a single thing to tell somebody to do a great job. Doesn't hurt your pocketbook at all. Don't treat it as if it does. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for showing that there's so many different different opportunities and chances to be able to, to encourage one another. We can do it through small groups, or we can do it through through a phone call, or we can do it through just reaching out and saying, I love what God's doing through you. Father, give us the courage and the strength to be able to to step out sometimes and say and give those words of affirmation. Because so often we're afraid of what people are going to think, or they're going to think, oh, he's hitting on me, or she's hitting on me, and that's not the case. But you just want us to help build one another up. You just want to help one another grow. You just want us to be able to sharpen one another, to be able to help one another become fully devoted followers. Do you want to help us be able to share experience and share life with one another, to share where the wrinkle came from and the tales, and, and, and this is how we got through these situations the right way instead of the shortcuts. Father, help us continue to grow. Help us continue to grow closer to you and help us continue to live generously. The, the things that you've poured so abundantly onto us the positive thinking and the and to be able to encourage one another so that we can give this away freely. That we can pour it out. That the cup can be overflowing onto others. Father, we're thankful for the changes that you're making right now. Some of us are thinking and some of us are changing just how we're going to talk to our kids this afternoon. How we're going to make changes in how we talk to our spouse. It's amazing just off 30 minutes to change our lives. Father, we're grateful for this time together. And we're grateful for what you're going to do throughout this service, what you're going to do throughout this week. It's in your son, in Jesus' name, that we pray. Amen.